All right, we're back with another vlog. Same thing as last week, another stream at Peaks Dallas. I'll be honest, probably not gonna be posting a lot more vlogs from the streams. I will continue playing them, but I'm not gonna make too many vlogs out of them because I prefer to watch vlogs from behind the chair or the actual table footage, whatever you call it. I prefer, prefer, wow, prefer them the other way. Pause. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be making vlogs out of. Uh, but we do have a few hands to go through from this last stream the previous week. Without further ado, let's get into those hands. Let's go. All right, first hand of the session is a good one. Action starts with a raise from Harvey in the plus three to $30. Spin calls on his left and it folds to me in the small blind and we look down at pocket jacks. Oh no. I'm gonna three bet this one up. I like a sizing of 4X being out of position, plus having a collar in between us. So I'm gonna make it $125. Folds back to Harvey, and as you guys can see, we are not in good shape. He has pocket kings, and he says it's not enough. He makes it 275. Spin folds, and for only 150 more, it's almost a min raise. And also, with us being 1K effective, all I have to do is hit a jack, and we will double up. So, with all that in mind, I'm going to stick in the call, and we are heads up to a flop. Becomes pretty bad, as it often does for pocket jacks. It's 3-6 ace, two spades, one club. At least we have ourselves a back door flush draw, but that's about it. So, I check, and he bets 145. Seeing our cards now and seeing his cards, what an amazing bet by Harvey. Um, I almost did stick in the call, but I just can't think of too many hands that were beating. The likely hand that I thought he could have that we were ahead of preflop was ace-king, and obviously we're losing to that. So not much to do here. I am going to fold. In this next one, we look down at King Jack off. Once again, not going to say it, sick freaks. Um, there's a $10 straddle, and I'm first act. So I'm going to raise it up to $40, a bit loose, like I said, but that's okay. Folds over to Sven in the big blind. He puts in the call, and so does Scott in the straddle. So we're three ways to a flop. It comes queen, three, queen, rainbow. It's a paired board. Should be pretty easy to get a lot of those pseudo connectors or ace highs to fold. Um, I do think that any pocket pair is at least going to have to call a bet, but that's okay because we can apply some serious pressure on future streets and we can also make a pair ourselves. So when it checks to me, I'm going to bet for $40 and Sven now decides to check raise to 110 As you guys can see, he has ace high, so kind of a sick read here. He thinks I'm full of it. Unfortunately, I am full of it, but at times, I'm not going to be full of it. So Scott folds, and it's on me. I do think about just calling. I think if he has a pocket pair, he's probably going to check a lot of turns, and there's a lot of good turns for us. Any 10, we're open-ended. Any king or jack, we have a pair. Any ace, we have a gutter. Y'all get the point. Um, I think there's a lot of possibilities, a lot of ways that we can win this hand on future streets. But um, all that to say, I just folded. All right. 0 for 2, let's try to change that. The $10 straddle is back on again. Scott opens to King Jack. No. Oh my gosh. Scott opens with King Jack of Hearts to $35. And I look down at Ace King of Diamonds. Obviously going to be putting in a 3 bet here. And I'm going to make it $110. Folds back to Scott and he folds. So honestly, about as good of a result as you can ask for with Ace King. Obviously we were going to whiff that flop. So happy to take it down pre-flop. Now we're 1 for 3. In this one, we are in the $10 straddle with King-5 suited. Jason limps, folds over to Sven, and he raises to $35. Folds back to me, and with the suited King in the straddle, I'm not going anywhere, and neither is Jason. We both call when we are off to a flop. It comes 10, King-Deuce, Rainbow. So flop ourselves, top pair, pretty good, but a pretty bad kicker, so not too comfortable with it. I check, and now Jason bets 50 with his bottom pair and back door straight and flush draws. Sven calls with his gutter, and I am pretty confused at this point. But I'm not folding. Come on now. I stick in the call, and we are still three ways to a turn. It comes the four of spades. I check again, and this time Jason decides to check. And now Sven bets 125 into a pot of 258. So I don't know. Not a very comfortable spot. This is probably why you shouldn't play hands like King 5. But come on, it was suited. We were in the straddle. Got to cut me some slack here. Anyways, there's still plenty of draws out there. Draws that we're beating. Straight draws, flush draws. So... I am going to stick in the call. Jason folds, and now we're heads up to a river. The river comes the queen of hearts. Of course, in the moment, I didn't think it was a horrible card. I thought it was pretty likely that Sven had a hand like Jack Queen um, or maybe just a flush draw. So I didn't think it changed much. Either way, though, I check, and now Sven bets 325, and that is not what I was hoping for. I was hoping he'd check it back um, or just, you know, place a huge bet, super polarizing think it'd be a bit easier to call but this smells and feels like value and obviously it is 
Uh, but thankfully, I make the right decision and fold. So happy to make the right decision in the end. Not happy to get sucked out on, but um, I guess that's what I get for playing King 5. But I mean, it was suited, so come on now. Anyways, on to the next hand. All right, it's time to start winning some hands. And this one, we look down at pocket fives in the hijack. This time, the $20 straddle is on. So, yeah, we're playing 1, 2, 10, 20. Folds to me can make a case for raising. Probably should be raising. But I just call folds back to the straddle, the double straddle, I should say. And, of course, Sven is going to raise it up here. He makes it $80 being in position. I am going to set mine. I stick in the call. We are off to a flop. It comes horrible. It comes 9, 8, queen, rainbow, he bets 80, I fold. As you guys can see, uh, I am not doing too good in this stream. I'm getting absolutely owned. But it's not over just yet. There's more hands to come. On to the next hand. And this one action starts with a raise from Harvey. In the plus three, he makes it 15. Sven calls in the hijack and it folds over to me. And I look down at ace five suited. The club variety. Great hand to go ahead and three bet. But um, when you're losing every pot, honestly... It can get to you, and it can cause you to play a bit more passively. And uh, I think this is a prime example of that because I decided to just call, and now we go three ways to a flop. But it comes pretty good. It comes three queen, king, two clubs, one diamond. We got ourselves a nut flush draw. I'm going to start with a check. Harvey checks, and so does Sven. So we are still three ways to a turn. It comes the seven of spades. When everybody checks on the flop, I think ace high could be good sometimes. Either way, we have a lot of possibilities with our hand. So I'm going to take the betting lead. I'm going to make it $30, three-fourths the size of the pot. Harvey calls with his pair of queens, and Sven folds. Off to a river, and it comes the eight of clubs. Finally, we are going to win a hand. We have the nuts. Pot's a little over $100. I bet 75 bucks. In hindsight, I would have liked to overbet. I think this is a great spot to do that. That way, it either looks like I have the nuts or complete air. But that's not what I did. And um, yeah, Harvey folds. So even when we're winning hands, we're kind of still getting owned. Because if you think about it, Harvey only put in money when he was ahead. And when he was behind, he folded. So we kind of got the bare minimum there. I guess we could have three bet pre-flop, but um, we didn't. Either way, though, I'm still happy to win the pot. Definitely a boost mentally. Let's see if we can't keep that going. All right, and this one, Sven raises to $15 from the plus two. Frederick calls in the plus three, and so does Scott in the hijack. And I look down at ace, nine of spades in the cutoff, and I think this is a great spot to go ahead and three bet. So that's what I do. I make it $60. In hindsight, would have liked a sizing of 70 to 85 bucks, but that's okay, not too upset with that. Either way, Sven calls, Frederick folds, and Scott calls as well. So we're three ways to a flop. Comes pretty good. It comes eight, ace, eight. So we flop ourselves top pair, technically two pair. When action checks to me, I'm going to bet $60 and target all pocket pairs. But unfortunately, they both fold. No complaints on my end, though. I'm just happy to win the pot. Let's keep it going. This next hand is a good one. The net game has just been put on. We're doing $15 ahead. So if you lose, you lose $120. I know it's not a lot, but we're not all rich. Some of us are. I'm not one of them. Anyways, I look down at Pocket Kings, the very first shuffle in the plus three, and I raise it up to $35. Only Jason calls in the cutoff and looking at his cards. I wish he would have three bet, but uh, he didn't. And I really wish he would have when the flop comes 5-3 King. So we flop ourselves top set, a.k.a. the nuts. Only issue is we pretty much have this board completely locked up, and it's super dry. So I'm going to check, and sadly, Jason checks it. Back. Off to a turn, it comes to 10 of diamonds, still a super dry board, still have the nuts, but um, I'm going to have to start betting at some point. So I bet off for $35, and this time Jason calls off to a river, and it comes beautiful. It comes the ace of spades, and honestly, in the moment, I was a bit scared of a hand like Jack Queen suited, but I don't think checking is the right play here. There's plenty of hands that get value from, such as any ace X holding, and obviously ace four, not that I put him on ace four but it's a good hand to get value from y'all get what i'm saying so i bet a hundred dollars and he snap calls obviously we're gonna win this one and once again i think that would have been a good spot to put an over bet in i could be being a bit result oriented but um i don't know i feel like that was a really good spot to do so let me know what you guys think in the comments is an over bet to play there is 100 bucks the perfect bet let me know what y'all think and that leads us into the last hand, but it is an action-packed last hand. It starts with a race from spin to $30 in a plus two, folds over to me in the cutoff, and I look down at four or five of hearts. Can make a case for three betting. That's not what I did, though. I just stuck in the call. Everyone else folds. We're heads up to a flop. It comes pretty good. It comes six, three, ten, 
one hard out there. So we got ourselves an open ender and a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight flush draw, technically. Spin checks, and on this kind of board, should favor me. And obviously our hand has connected with this board. So I'm going to put out a bet of $30 and spend pretty quickly calls. So we are off to it. Action turn. It comes the three of hearts. There's that back door straight flush draw I was talking about. Spin checks. I bet $85. And as you guys can see, Spin has also turned himself the nut flush draw. So he's going to get a bit aggressive here. He check raises to $235. Puts me in a weird spot. I do contemplate jamming all in. But the issue I'm having is we block all the draws he could have. So I think we're only getting called by better. But if he just has a one pair holding an over pair or just a 10, it's going to put him in a really, really tough spot. So I do like the idea of putting it all in. Obviously, that would have probably worked here. But that's not what I did. I just called and we were off to a river. Come on, dealer. One time, the deuce of hearts, one time. River comes, the deuce of diamonds. So close, so close. Either way, though, we make ourselves a straight. And when Sven checks, I'm going to be really honest, I don't know the correct sizing here. If you guys have an idea of what the correct sizing would be on this river, let me know in the comments. In the moment, I bet $400, but I'm trying to think what I'm targeting, and I guess it's just an overpair or a 10. Um, once again, I think an overbet or a pot size bet might have been the play here, but that's not what I did. I bet $400, and obviously Sven can't do much with his ace high. He folds but we're going to scoop the last hand of the session onto the outro all right that is it for this vlog i am shooting this outro like an hour after i shot that intro and as you can see it was sunny now it's about to storm here in texas so let's make this quick we were in that game for 1500 dollars, cashed out for 1468 so we lost 32 bucks not bad we were down like 800 at the low point um, we're gonna have to book a win on that stream here soon um it's coming you guys tune in probably next Thursday to watch that happen. I feel a big win coming on that stream here soon. Anyways, uh, that's it for this vlog. Thank you guys for all the constant support. Thank you guys for 10,000 subs. That is ridiculous. Um, I thought that would, I didn't even know if that was ever going to happen, to be honest with you guys. So thank you guys for helping me get there in such a short period of time. If you haven't already, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, so I can keep pushing out these videos. They take a while to make and edit. But again, thank you guys for all the support. Until next time, good luck at your local tables. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.